Alright, hello everybody, welcome to Two Crusaders, the podcast that reviews every single superhero thingamabob ever made. I'm your co-host, <laughs> Michael, and as always, I'm joined by... Joshua Mervell, and today we are taking a look at the 1977 Amazing Spider-Man TV movie pilot. That's right, and we are joined by Bex Luthor. Thank I'm you here because it's Spider-Man. Yay! And I love Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, everyone missed you, so it's good to have you back. They didn't. You don't have to lie. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, I, I did. made that up. Yeah. Well, okay. Just uh, ev- You know what that is, everybody. So. <laughs> but also back this week, after a three-week absence, because you have you been on the show before? Yes, you have, Doc Savage. <laughs> so it's been, what, yeah. four weeks, five weeks, six weeks? I don't know. But this uh. is... Uh, we wanted to pull you out for the big guns. We brought you back for Spidey. We have Champion back. Thanks, Hello. Champion. Hello. Thank you for having me back. It's great to be here. Mike, good to see you. Josh, good to see you again. Uh, Bex Luthor, it is great to meet you for the very first time ever. <laughs> We've never spoken once, and this yeah, is exciting. never <laughs> spoken before. This is a very exciting event for both of us. I don't have a crowbat on my phone from 20... 20- 18 that I ran out of your bar once to go catch in Pokemon Go and then came back and named it Ian and I kept it. Aww, <laughs> that Aww. is maybe the coolest thing I've ever heard. That's amazing. It was when ever Crobat was first uh, Pokemon and my bar. I don't even know what that means, but <laughs> I'll take your word for it that it's cool. <clears throat> it is. It is. Is, that, is that your coolest Pokemon ever? No. <laughs> <laughs> coolest name, maybe, but. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Coolest name. They released well, a lot not, more since then. We're not here to talk about nerdy stuff like video games. We're here to talk about cool stuff like Spider-Man. Okay, guys? So let's stick to the topic at hand here. We're here to talk about the TV show that was launched around the same time as Incredible Hulk. Incredible mm-hmm. Hulk was a smash hit. This was eh, not so much as a, of a hit. Um, I, When I grew up as a little kid, I don't know if you remember this champion, but this was on when we were little kids, and I did watch it, and I thought it was a master... Okay. <laughs> this is this is arguably what got me into Spider-Man in the first place. In fact, I love Spider-Man so much that I remember buying a Hulk like toy set where you would put like a Hulk belt on and Hulk wristbands and a Hulk whatever. And I actually just played Spider-Man with it anyway because I love Spider-Man so much. <laughs> so this is what did it: his costume, his the the special effects, Nicholas Hammond, everything about it. Uh, I love this show as a kid. First, I want to know, Ian, did you watch the show as a kid? I don't believe that I did. Uh, when I was okay. a kid, I was born to like uh, Dukes of Hazard was my thing. Um, when it came to superheroes, no, that was kind of off my radar. I think the closest I watched any sort of superhero franchise would have been uh, Masters of the Universe. Okay, if that even okay. counts. But uh, nope, Spider Man was not on my radar. And this is the first time, you know, come to think of it, this may be the first time that I have ever watched a Spider Man property. Wow. Oh. Well, let me tell you, it doesn't Oops. get better than this, okay? Anyway, <laughs> um, Bex Luthor, did you ever see this version of Spider-Man before this week? I have. I realized for some reason I just never watched the pilot. <laughs> yeah. But I know that I think I showed you an episode that I had on VHS, right? After one of the movies, we watched it at my house. That sounds very familiar. Um, and that's also yeah. something I would do. We just watched the yeah. movie. Now let's watch another movie. <laughs> yeah, we just watched a movie. But have you seen this 70s Spider-Man TV show? Yeah. And I was like, exactly. no, pull up the VHS player. Let's go. There you go. Hey, At Becca, one morning, when's the last time you've seen a VCR? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway. Um, in this room? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. Josh, what's your experience with Nicholas Hammond Spidey? Uh, actually, same. Um, I have definitely seen clips from the pilot. I don't think I've actually seen the pilot itself before, but have definitely watched random episodes. Um, I couldn't tell you what happened in them, but um, I have some sort of vague recollection of this. I I watched um, the Incredible Hulk TV movies that they did. Yes. Um, like the one oh, featuring yeah. Thor of in course. particular I had on DVD that I just like kept replaying over and over again. So mm. um, I'm sure I've seen this before, but it's kind of just like clips and stuff. Sure, sure. So I'm not super familiar with it. 
You know, it's funny because I, I do remember the, the fight scene where he like jumps on the ceiling. I must have it on tape somewhere because I have it memorized. So I must have somehow just had that one scene. But the rest of this, I remember telling Becca, I don't think they ever did the origin. But sure enough, it's almost all here, which we'll mm -hmm. talk about. But um, yeah, there's a lot to say about this. But before we go any further, Champion is going to give us a condensed summary of this episode. Champion, do you think you can do it in, what, two minutes? Is that enough? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for 90 seconds. Okay. Uh, there's, there's, okay. there's a whole bunch of like stuff in the middle. I'm probably gonna forget. That's probably okay. not that important because the yeah, movie did fine. sort of meander around a little bit, and uh, I, I, I kind of lost focus. Okay. Although um, it did get off to a to a fairly strong start, in my opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. We start off with a with kind of a cold open where um, there's a doctor who's doing some doctoring, and then all of a sudden mm. he goes into a daze and he just walks out of the room. Then there's a lawyer that's doing some lawyering. Same thing. He goes into a daze and he walks out of a room. They end up in a car and they commit a bank robbery and they just drive into a wall and kill themselves. <laughs> so, um, what's going on with this here? So now we flash to uh, the Daily Bugle where uh, a young Peter Parker uh, brings his hairdo and uh, uh, <laughs> a portfolio of uh, photographs that he's taken. He's trying to sell them to the Daily Bugle. He's uh, skipping out of school to do so. Um, he's kind of, uh, his photos are too artsy for the bugle, so they, they send him back to school. But before they do, there's a, a, a bulletin that comes by the newspaper saying a weird uh, thing about these murders. It turns out somebody is mind controlling these people into committing crimes. And uh, 10 people around the city are going to be mind controlled into killing themselves if uh, the mayor doesn't bring this person $50 million. So then we go uh, follow Peter Parker back to school where he's doing some very dangerous radiation stuff. Uh, him and his partner play the most dangerous game of a uh, little claw game and they, <laughs> they try and dump some radioactive stuff and some other stuff. A spider gets some radiation on him and subsequently bites Peter. And uh, ouch, he runs outside, he's rubbing his hand and then uh, someone tries to run him down very very slowly with a car he uh he senses this danger though the car is behind him and um he, he senses it i'm going to call it his doc savage sense tingles <laughs> that's right that's exactly what it is and uh he, he runs away and he, he discovers that he can climb a wall straight up many stories to get out of danger so he he learns <clears throat> excuse me that he has this power just by uh by getting himself out of danger Anyway, uh, there, there's uh, some there's more of these little suicides. Um, the police uh, police captain doing his best George C. Scott from Doctor Strange Love impression <laughs> starts to suspect that uh, Peter Parker has something to do with it. Um, Peter Parker he experiments with climbing walls. He uh, stops a purse snatching. Too many people see him though. He tries to sell photos to. Um, I don't know, he tries to convince the Daily Bugle that this is real. He stammers through, uh, uh, yeah, I saw him. Uh, he looks like this, and he was wearing a costume. So then he has to run home and make a costume. There is, uh, oh, how does it go from here? There is a professor that almost dies in a, in a suicide car accident, and he becomes sort of the, like, he's going to be the unraveling of the plot. So Spider-Man has to kind of protect him. He saves him from killing himself uh then oh is that on the building that's on the building yeah yeah uh, the, the, he, oof, we'll talk about that in the hospital we'll right that in the hospital yeah the the main villain ends up being this weird sort of a guru character <laughs> mm -hmm. that uh the professor had been seeing for some reason and he, he uses this microwave sort of ray to mind control anyone who's wearing a pin Peter Parker, he goes to see him, he ends up wearing the same pin, and despite the fact that he solves the problem, he gets mind-controlled into climbing the Empire State Building, where in a very, very good stroke of luck, a piece of the building knocks the pin off his lapel right before he's about to jump, and then he, he reverses the microwaves, and the guru turns into a zombie himself, and Peter Parker... Mind controls him into going to turn himself in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's it. So, 
The movie's I... an hour and a half long. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let me just see quickly. Rewatching it. I, I actually love Spider-Man's costume. Okay. I know that it was limited by 70s budgets and 70s taste. But I love his, I love his costume. Nicholas Hammond is awesome. Everything else is complete shit. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll get into specifics later. But uh, Becca, why don't we start with you? What did you think of the actual plot of this episode? I mean, it could be just your monthly comic book issue. Like, it's not from 70s, 80s Spider-Man. It's nothing groundbreaking, but also, like, definitely dumb enough to have been something we reviewed on the Spider-Cast. <laughs> uh, so that's fine. Could it have also been a half an hour? Absolutely. Uh, we don't We don't need... There's just a lot of faffing about. <laughs> mm -hmm. However, a lot of that faffing about is just Spider-Man... Doing Spider-Man things, scuttling about on rooftops, and that's the best part of this. I love watching him hunched over, just creepy crawling all over these buildings. <laughs> like, that's my Spider-Man. Um, but besides that, I didn't really like the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also didn't really like, what's his name? Spider-Man. Hammond? <gasps> yeah. Um, yes. He's not funny. There's no jokes and there's no quips. That's true. Zero quips. That's zero. That's definitely my problem with this version of Spider-Man. I think he's a great Peter Parker, actually. Mm -hmm. I think he has maybe the most Peter Parker personality out of any of the Ooh. live action Spider-Mans we've got. Ooh, like hot take like, from Joshua. I, I don't <laughs> I don't think this is the best version necessarily, but like I don't know. He the his whole vibe and how he acts and um He's a big dweebus. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he's this... very close to to what he is in the comics as Peter Parker. Once he puts on the costume, he stops talking. He doesn't say anything when he's Spider-Man. And it's so weird because even mm -hmm. at this time, because this is still like early on in Spider-Man, Spider-Man is right. quipping. He is oh, 100%. like Stanley invented quipping. Yep. Yeah, he's 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 goofing around. He's he's like talking shit on the bad guys. He's stopping like there was none of that. Um, I just gotta say, he, there was yeah. one time. Didn't he talk to a cabbie? Did he say mm -hmm. anything to the cabbie? That was the only time where there was a little bit of funny. It was kind of funny. That, yeah, like, he said he was I coming think, from a masquerade yeah, party or something it wasn't like that. Funny, like, it wasn't even it, that funny. It, it wasn't funny, but it was like an attempt. So I at least appreciate that. Right. But you're right. But it wasn't. That, it wasn't him quipping though. That's no. That's I think the problem with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Is like it was. It was a f so trying to be a funny moment, but he was just trying to come up with an actual excuse. To let mm -hmm. the guy get him into the car, right? right so right, right. I don't know. It's yeah. Him as Spider Man was not great. This plot is, I think, a really great premise, um, but it's really brought down by the editing and the pacing in this movie. Well, I think that and the, the idea and the acting, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, more like the plot. Like the plot could be great if the acting mm -hmm. is bad. But like the pacing of everything and how it how it goes, it's just so strange. And uh, like Becca was saying, they're half the time they're just walking around doing nothing. Like they desperately needed an editor for this. That there's there's a scene where JJ kicks Peter out of his office and he's walking through the Daily Bugle to go meet up with the girl, the daughter of the professor and he, we see him walk all the way, every single step we see him, just one continuous shot as he slowly walks up to her and then starts a conversation it's like, we could have seen him grab the door and then we cut to him walking and then seeing like it's just, there, there's so much extra nothingness happening in this, uh movie or pilot um yeah not great yeah. and, the, and the the ending as well feels very uh it does feel like an ending of a shitty comic book <laughs> <laughs> how it just ends on the last page right like yeah, trying to wrap things page. up in the last two panels mm -hmm. but with the worst line just... <laughs> yeah what was the line again uh, he, i can't remember what his I remember going, well, that's like, stupid. It was just like one of those wah, wah, wah. It was right? like, have a great day or like yeah, something, yeah. something so lame. Okay, so let's jump. Wait, let's. we're all going to have more of a chance to talk, but champion, let us know your, this is your first exposure to Spider-Man ever, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, whoops. 
Tell us. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I assume it gets better from here, uh, right? Like this isn't gonna, this isn't going to taint my my opinion of the franchise. Whoa, 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 whoa. But the uh, movies the movies get better. You've got I'm not kidding. not this version of. Well, no, I, I, I don't, I don't plan TV on show watching. Does not get better, but Spider Man yeah. is definitely better. But okay. I, I don't know. I don't have time to watch the rest of these episodes. I got 182 Doc Savage novels to read. Yeah, exactly. But um, <laughs> this, it, I was encouraged at the beginning, right? I think that this mm-hmm. got off on a good foot. I think mm-hmm. that the setup was all right, right? Like mm-hmm. it, it was an interesting mystery why these people. Um, these upstanding members of society would suddenly just snap and go do something something nefarious like this. And there were some good set pieces there too. I I liked the the little sciencey lab. Like it it did a good job of not looking super cheesy as well. Like the the little um the villain's lair with all its weird seventies technology. It didn't look like uh, like a like a stupid cheesy science fiction film and i appreciated mm-hmm. that but there was nothing in between these things mm-hmm. it just was a lot of wandering around they didn't do like some of peter parker exploring his abilities was kind of cute but they didn't do enough with that and beyond that i don't know i think that they spent a little bit too much time working on some of these special effects, some of which were really good, some of which were terrible, but some of which were really good. But they, they, they didn't spend enough time looking at the, at the grand picture of what they were doing, and it was just a mess. Well, we should point out, and I don't want to build it up too much, but we're going to be reviewing The Incredible Hulk soon, and Incredible Hulk was sent from heaven, okay, by Yahweh himself. <laughs> it is so good. I love it. Kenneth Johnson of... Um, Bionic Woman and Alien Nation fame wrote and directed the pilot. It is so awesome. It's much better than any version, almost any version of the comic book Hulk, in my opinion. But this, it does so many things wrong. Like, uh, we'll talk about the special effects in a minute. But I want to point out that, you know, one of the things I liked about the Hulk, it was, the Hulk was basically the, the, the real world with a big green strong guy in it. There was no super villains. There was no aliens. There was no time travel. And Spider-Man felt like it could have been that. Like you said, Ian, it kind of started out strong. So when I'm watching it at the beginning and Peter Parker's in that lab with his coworker or whatever, I'm sitting there going, oh, good. It doesn't look like a slick CSI setting. Mm. It just looks like a plain, low-budget, 70s you know, environment. But then they start talking, and I realized it was just a fluke that it looked the way it did and felt the way it did. It was just because of the lack of budget. But when they actually opened their mouths... There was so much dialogue that was just wasting time, I noticed. Like when he was talking to his coworker, geez, I wish I could remember the conversation, but it just seemed like it was tedious. Like, oh God, I already know what you're going to say, and now you're going to talk about it for another two minutes. Or when he was in uh, the Daily Bugle with J. Jonah Jameson, and that was Joe Robertson, right? Yeah. I think it was, yeah. Where they'd be like, oh, well, uh, I know that Spider-Man's real. Well, how do you know he's real? Oh, because I saw him. What? There was just a guy dressed up walking up a wall. Uh, no, he's wearing a costume. And you're just thinking, <laughs> obviously the people that wrote this must have professional experience. But why are they spending so much time on all the wrong things? Like, why did you have to spend that much time on that conversation that only leads, I suppose, Peter Parker to want to create a costume because he said it in the conversation and blah, blah, blah. And it just seems like, you know, Becca, you said earlier it could have been a 22-minute episode. It could have, but if it, if they do have 90 minutes, they could have done so much more with it. Mm-hmm. You know, but they waste time. Like, remember when Spider-Man, like, you know, Ian, you were saying uh, some of the special effects look good. Like when P- Spider-Man's walking down the the side of a building and you're 100 feet away, that does more to inspire awe in me than the, um, the Andrew Garfield movies where he's spinning around the lizard or whatever. And it just looks like a video game. That that does nothing for me because it doesn't feel real. It feels like I'm in a video game. But in this movie, when you look up and you see an actual man on a skyscraper, that's the that's the kind of thing that inspired Alex Ross to do his thing in Marvels and Kingdom Come. The point of view of the pedestrian looking up and seeing giant man step over him. Like that stuff was great. But then when you cut to the people and they're like, I saw a guy climbing down the wall. And then the cop is sitting there, and instead of the cop just going like this. 
He just he keeps saying, "Well, who saw him?" Well, I did. Look, he's right there. The dialogue was complete garbage all the way through, <laughs> and I just it just ruined it for me because it could have been so much better, but it was terrible. And it's like like I said, there's a few moments that I thought were good, but overall, I thought the writing was complete crap. Let's talk about the special effects. Ian, you thought some of them were good. Um, what other ones besides like the climbing that I mentioned do you think were really good? Well, the cl- the climbing and and the sw- and the swinging uh, from building to building were very well done. Uh, the 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 wide shots of the climbing, in particular, when you could just see he's very small. Yeah, that looked very, that looked very mm-hmm. convincing. It looked very convincing. But then they'd switch to uh, to a close up of him climbing, and it's obviously just a static shot of a building, and he's climbing up on a green screen. <laughs> yes, and, he, and like you could tell what they were trying to do. Like you could see, like all right, climb up this far because at this point you're coming to this part of this static mm-hmm. shot, and then you have to pause and pretend like you're climbing over this thing. It was choreographed, but it didn't look visually convincing. Now no. this is 1977. In a, in a TV movie pilot, so I'm not really expecting that much of them, but I, I don't know, they, they they had such a good effect on some of it, they should have leaned more heavily on the wide shots and not so yeah. much for the close-ups. I think what really helped with the special effects were, um, and I think it's very creative, is cutting to POV shots. Mm-hmm. So we right. kind of like see him yeah. swinging and then we cut to a POV and we see his hands kind of like come into frame around the camera and like grab onto parts of the building. I thought that that was actually really clever and still kind of held up today. But yeah, then that gave me some kind of like Sam Raimi vibes almost. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, I think they actually do that in the Mark Webb, like the first Amazing Spider-Man as well. They mm-hmm. have a lot of like POV with his hands kind of like coming into frame. But then you would cut over to a very lame shot of him climbing up a building, but it's clearly like flat on the ground and he's just on his hands and knees and not right. on a wire. It's just a but set. He, yeah. it's, it, he's so he's so far away that it looks like he's like pretending to be a dog rather than being close <laughs> onto the ground like Spider-Man. And yes. the shadow is directly under him. <laughs> So it, it, it right. it's not like the like the sun is now like right next to him. So it's it's yeah. just so strange that they didn't like think that through. Like just to right. light it a little bit better and then tell him to go down because the effect itself isn't awful. I think it's just how they executed it. You're right. Didn't work, uh, especially when you're cutting back to like things that are working really great and then you cut to that and it's like oh man that's <laughs> that blows <laughs> and they could have sold that by having like maybe like in batman where people stick their heads out the windows but not for comedic effect but just more for to sell it right? something right yeah. yeah um becca what'd you think of the special effects um i do know that i don't know about it in the pilot but i do know that in later episodes in the intro especially like once they actually get an intro it's like a lot of wire work so um, and a lot of dangerous, ununionized <laughs> wire work. Um, <laughs> I forget what I was watching, but they were doing like a deep dive into it and how they were just like, yeah, just climb the building, stuntman. He was like, okay. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of just w- a guy climbing a building with nothing. And they're wow. like, got it, done. And it's like, uh, okay. Um, and it's very convincing because it's real. <laughs> <laughs> but... Safety first, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like the wire work that they that they definitely use for some of the shots. Clearly, um, the green screen is just brutal. I love the parkour where he's like jumping from <laughs> building to building, and it's he's just standing mm-hmm. still yeah. on a set. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't talk about the best special effect, which is the radioactive spider. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah i forgot about that it pulsates a little bit <laughs> mm. but what about the webs you see sometimes the oh. web was cool sometimes they're cool when he's like shooting like like gross sticky cobweb webs yes and yeah. it like spins it, out of his yeah. arms yeah 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 the way it like um, spun out like that like a wheel almost and then that yeah. was pretty interesting they definitely I'm not sure had it made some sense clever. but it looks cool <laughs> <laughs> but you yep. know i gotta say too when he shot it to from, remember when he was like 
the first one of the first times he ever used the web, he was on one building and it's almost like he didn't know what to do. So then he shot his web and then swung to the other building. But it's probably one of Becca, like you mentioned, some random dude like, I'll do it, man. I'm going to impress you guys for minimum wage. And he's just swinging from a building to another building with no harness, no safety net, you know. But it looked, it's like, oh, that's what a real guy would look like if he was swinging from a building. He wouldn't just be zipping around New York City like in new movies, right? It really looks just like the real weight of a person on that rope. You know, it was really cool. I like that. I do um, prefer the more acrobatic spider-man swinging because it makes him feel superhuman and i mean the art that comes from mm -hmm. little peter parker contorting in the sky is sure sure some of my favorite spider-man yeah. art of all time and also if you well not you mike but but maybe josh and ian if you've ever played the most recent spider-man games or any spider-man game where the swinging mechanics are really good mm -hmm. that feeling of like weightlessness when he's like swings up it's and hits the peak is is cannot be matched in i think a lot of other video games so yeah. like that's and my I, favorite part i think that's like a big part of spider-man too um are are those like weird ways that he swings and that's not just a movie thing that's even in the comics right like all of his poses are like even in the comics that's not that doesn't look how like somebody would be swinging across a building so um i think that why we get that in the movies now is because it's so we can match what we see in the comics and we still get him swinging from building to building but when we pause the movie we can see the exact panel that would be in the comic right so he's in that like crazy pose where his like hand holding the 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 web is almost like underneath his legs you know what i mean and sure, his like sure. legs are all crunched up so right. yeah we definitely don't get any of that in this but it does feel more grounded and it it kind of works for this cop drama that they're sure. trying yeah. to shove right, spidey right, in right. um so something i didn't know at the time this was this this was being done by the same network as wonder woman and the incredible hulk mm. and the reason why it was canceled so early was not because it wasn't doing well because it was actually doing pretty good um they just didn't want to be known as the superhero channel so they hmm. dropped one wow of them. poor spidey yeah. and they dropped oh. spidey spider-man <laughs> yeah that's shocking that is shocking mm -hmm. well wonder woman was such a phenomenon and same with uh hulk. the incredible hulk so i'm, I'm assuming that spider-man was just the, the the least lowest. successful of the three so mm -hmm. they yeah they dropped it after the two seasons imagine well, today having the rights to a spider-man tv show and being like oh we don't too many superhero <laughs> tv shows making us too much money uh get rid of one uh, we don't want to be them right so and let's disney's like don't worry i got it i will be <laughs> that <laughs> let's talk about the costume because i personally again i grew up on this and I gotta say, I mean, by 70 standards, the costume is pretty awesome, especially compared to what we got with Captain America, which we'll be talking about eventually. But I thought the costume was pretty cool, including those funky eyes. But uh, Champion, <laughs> what did you think of the costume in this one? Uh, uh, I, hmm, I don't know. No, like no? it just, it looked a little frumpy. Like, I li yeah, I like the eyes. That's pretty much the only thing that I liked about it. I, I don't understand i mean yeah it's the 70s but they they, they had tailors in the 70s they they made clothes look good in the 70s <laughs> yeah. couldn't they have done something with this to make it look i don't know like i don't know if they were just trying to make it look exactly like the comic books and they didn't want to stray from that but it just it, it looked silly i don't know mm -hmm. it didn't do uh, anything for me okay josh yeah, I kind of agree. It does just feel like a Halloween costume. Um, it also, you can also clearly tell when certain people are in the costume and certain people aren't. Because it <laughs> yes. looks drastically different between <clears throat> shots. Yes. Um, when we first see the costume, I burst out laughing because the mm. guy... The way that the I think it's both the way that the shot is lit and just whoever's in the costume at the time 
um, wasn't as muscular because it looks like he has some sort of like padding in his arms and his shoulders, but they didn't do anything to his legs. So he has these tiny little skinny like twigs of legs. <laughs> it's essentially just like two sticks. And then he's kind of has like a bigger, stronger upper torso. And he, it just looks so strange. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of the eyes. I think they're fine. They just seem a little too small and goggly. Yeah, I mean, they're but, not exactly comic accurate, but I just, I don't know, there's something funky about that. And I'm very particular about how eyes are done, like for Spider-Man, not all eyes, but mm. just Spider-Man. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but knowing that, I still like them. Now, we should point out, Ian, I'm not sure if you know about this, but there was a Japanese version of Spider-Man at almost yeah. the same time called Supita Man. And if you click on the uh, picture that I just dropped into the chat here, you can see... Mm -hmm. The American costume on the left and the Japanese costume on the right. And the the Japanese is actually closer to the comic book. I love Would it. those have been two That's... contemporary costumes? Yes. That's what I was going to say. I was like, well, the costume is no Japanese Spider-Man costume, which is phenomenal. Which mm -hmm. is right. one of my favorite Spider-Man costumes actually ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I well, love Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, even looking at this picture... His eyes are actually more comic book accurate. We should also point out that in later episodes, the Nicholas Hammond Spider-Man does get the belt and the um, web shooters on the outside, which I always thought looked really cool. Hmm. Maybe it's maybe it's not a streamlined, but it does look freaking awesome, doesn't it? I think. Yeah, he I don't mind. Like he's wearing sandals in this, isn't he? Though the Japanese uh, Spider-Man is he? Yeah, good point. He is. Oh my god, you're right. Those <laughs> yeah. are like Crocs. <laughs> Holy, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Sorry, no I've, one's gonna ru notice. I've ruined it for everyone now. No Sorry. one's going to notice no. that on a 480i <laughs> television set, right? So, right. Anyway. Um, this Sorry, whole time I was Becca? watching this, it just made me wish I was watching Japanese Spider-Man. Yeah. Mm. Because, like, it's so far removed from the the, the canon of the comic, but he's, it's sick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ian, we if you've never watched Japanese Spider-Man, absolutely. So good. I well, will find a legitimate download for Japanese Spider-Man and watch it legally. My <laughs> favorite comic accurate part about Spider-Man is when he enters a gigantic Spider-Man robot and fights crime that way. But um, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, uh, uh, Le Leopardon? It's not yeah. even a Spider-Man yeah. robot. It's just yeah, a big it's leopard. Just, it's just a ran. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But here's the thing. Let's talk about the comic book accuracy because I. They do cover most of the origin, but Ian, as someone who doesn't know a lot about Spider-Man's origin, are you aware of the gigantic part of Spider-Man's origin that they left out of this episode? No, no. Well, um, arguably I, more important than the spider powers. Yes. Oh, really? so, oof, oof. Oh. I know. Becca, Becca, know. you tell him. You tell him. I know. Pick me. I know. Okay. Uncle Ben, he's not there. <laughs> Where's Uncle Ben? Exactly. Yeah. So what happens, Ian, is Spider-Man gets superpowers, but unlike Superman or other superheroes, he doesn't just become a superhero. He becomes an asshole. This, <laughs> oh. this arrogant, showboating celebrity that just goes on talk shows and shows off his powers and makes money. And then one day, um, he's at like a, a TV studio and a, 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 a bad guy has robbed somebody and they're running past Spider-Man. And a cop is like, hey, stop that guy. And he's like, why would I? I only care about number one. That's me, right? Because he's an he's arrogant. So he lets the guy go. Then that night he goes home and somebody has broken into his house that he lives in with Aunt May and Uncle Ben and shot Uncle Ben. And then Uncle Ben dies. And then Sp Spider-Man chases down the burglar to like a warehouse. And then he discovers that the burglar that shot his Uncle Ben is the same guy that he let go earlier in the story. Oh. Yeah, so it's a classic. That is like the greatest superhero origin ever written, in my opinion. And uh, that's what makes him become a superhero. Is he learns the lesson with great power. Ian? Comes. Oh, uh, comes, comes some sort of responsibility. Great responsibility. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mediocre responsibility. Yeah, he's there, there you go. So with anyway, some level they, of power. They, they censored that. It's probably too heavy for a 70s TV audience. Maybe, I don't know. They, Everyone they was dying in this. I guess so. The, the whole plot was that the bad guy was making people commit suicide. The suicide yeah. That's true. And also, 70s movies were loaded with violence and tragedy. So I don't really know what their excuse is. I don't no, it, know. It, it was cut for time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right. We needed more time of them walking in Central Park talking <laughs> right, about literally right, nothing. Right. 
I, um, oh, go did ahead, any, was anybody else bothered by the fact that they had that uh, Peter and the girl had just met <laughs> in the alleyway, and then the next time he sees her, he's like, "Hey, can I borrow forty six bucks?" And she goes, <laughs> "After everything you've done for my family, of course." <laughs> It's Here's like, 46 what, what, ha- what happened in between here? What did I miss? Because she doesn't know that Peter is Spider-Man. And the mm-hmm. only thing that Peter's done for them is save her dad as Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. So it's like, he He, he drove with her to the hospital. Yeah, he, he popped she in the drove, passenger though. seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't yeah. think he was even really invited along. He just kind no. of opened the door for her and then no, he got on the you. other side. Yeah. Yeah, and they could have just easily been like, "Oh, they're friends." Exactly. Like established friends, but no, they didn't. <laughs> like she could have been in his class and the professor could have been his professor. I don't know why they went so far out of the way to be like, "Oh, he doesn't know this guy at all." Cuz it it wouldn't have, <laughs> it would have been even I think better if it was one of his professors mm-hmm. and she was all like he knew her from the class and stuff. Right. Like just give your characters a little bit of like, you know, you don't have to have their be like every interaction that they've ever had has to be on screen. Good yeah. point. Right. Well, speaking of uh, supporting characters, the only supporting characters carried over from the comic are J. Jonah Jameson, Joe Robertson, and Aunt May, which I forgot Aunt May was even in this. Uh, she- apparently, Robbie Robertson is only in this pilot and then what? he's gone what? for the that's rest why of the I, thing. That's why and, I forgot about him because okay. uh, they have. Gloria Grant, I believe, in the show. Really? Okay, that's cool. Yeah. But I this guy, remember her. This Robbie's so good, though. Yeah. This this Robbie he's, is good, yeah. He's the only one who knows how to act in this whole pilot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah, they ditched like Gwen the Stacy. Too. They ditched, yeah. Oh, let's not go so far. It's to say oh, we okay. like the cop. <laughs> Ian, like I you said. the acting in the We don't camera. like cops on this <laughs> no, 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 but this guy. Spider-Man said a cab, okay? <laughs> the, no, this actor, we, of course, famous for the one scene he had in Night Shift, which is what I know him from. Um, he's in court. And he has to pull down his pants to prove he was attacked by a prostitute. And he pulls down his pants and shows a bite mark on his ass. Anyway, it doesn't matter. That was his claim to fame. Uh, this guy is a fine actor, but he overacts throughout the entire pilot. Uh, the guy who plays Joel Robertson's fine. What did you guys think about J. Jonah Jameson, uh, Becca? The cop is more J. Jonah than this guy. Yep. Yeah. That's why I like him. He even has a cigar. The cop has yeah. the cigar. <laughs> he is J. Jonah Jameson. Like that. Yeah. Like, that's why he is, he, I like him the most out of the supporting characters in this show. Yeah, he is overacting, but he also knows that he's in a superhero TV show. And he's the only one that feels like a comic book character. Like, everything that he's doing feels like a foil to Spider-Man and Peter Parker. Where Mm -hmm. we don't get that from JJ. We don't get that from even the bad guy in this doesn't really have much of an interaction with the two of them. It's, it's the cop. Yeah. It's the only other interesting part that, that has any sort of conflict with Peter. Mm-hmm. Becca, what'd you think? Yeah, no, fully fully agree. Um unfortunately there is only like five characters in this whole <laughs> movie that have like anything to do with the story at all. Mm-hmm. Um don't forget about Dave, the lab assistant. Yeah, he's there. <laughs> okay. But you know what's I funny? want you to know that it's Dave's fault that spider-man exists just okay. so we are all that clear. is pretty funny if he would have just been a little more careful or paid a little bit more attention no spider-man so this is true to Dave. uh we i also want to point out that apparently after this episode the actor for J. jonah jameson changed yeah mm-hmm. i didn't know that um so there's no gwen there's no mj there's no betty brant but there is julie masters uh, who appears in eight episodes. Um, again, it doesn't take a budget to include Mary Jane or Gwen or any of these, or, or even, uh, what's her name? Um, our favorite. Um, Deb? Je- Deb Whitman? Justice for Deborah Whitman. She wasn't around yet, but still, it doesn't require a budget to, to include these characters. So I don't know why they didn't, right? It just divorces it more from the comic book. Right. So they should have. But yeah. I mean, Betty would be would have been perfect for this. Right, right, right. I think. Um... I don't know what else there is to say about this other than it sucks, but... Um, Aunt May <laughs> was there. Sorry? Yeah. She, Aunt May's there. 
Yeah. What's that? She's in a That's scene, it. I think. Uh, who is? May, she, she's Maybe. very, very concerned about uh, about uh, Peter Parker coming down to eat his soup. Yeah. Anyway, with allergy well, medication. Which mm. is very Aunt May-esque. Apparently, she's only in this... Wait, is she in... There's two two Aunt Mays. Oh, no, oh, no. They, yeah, they recast Aunt May, too. Two Aunt Mays, and they're only in two episodes. So that's, again... <laughs> I. Th- Go ahead. No, I just laughed. Oh, okay. <laughs> Real funny. I, I think that's why I don't remember them, because I only had one episode on tape as a kid, and I probably just saw that one and maybe one or two other ones, but yeah. Um, okay, there's one thing we haven't talked about. What about the theme song? Does anyone remember the theme song? No. I, well, remember, the, I remember the music score in general being this wonderful 70s vibe. Yeah, it's such a... There's like bad guys stuff going on and it's like the sickest funk beat you've ever heard <laughs> um and then there is a bad guy theme song right every time the bad guys are doing something the same song plays i didn't notice that i definitely did it's mm. the first song that plays in the when like they're robbing the bank and then every time anything like goes on with the cult it's just that song again <laughs> from the start um did, did this have a theme song or is the theme song in the next one I think there's a theme song in this one. Maybe I'm just making it up, but I mean, I'm actually remember. flipping through the episode and I'm trying to find it again. And I know I saw it, but because there was a credits at oh, the here, beginning, no. right? Oh, there is. There is. Yeah. Is that the theme song? Because it's yeah. there's no mute. There's no like lyrics or anything. Like it's not like a no, no, no. But that's still the theme song. But uh, if you go to like the first minute, it starts. It starts around. Oh, it's pretty catchy. Yeah, it's just like that trumpet. You know. I gotta say, guys, no matter what you think of this show, 70s TV theme songs were so much catchier than modern day theme songs. Do you not agree? You gotta watch more cartoons, Mike. (laughs) Maybe that's my problem, but (laughs) I just find that modern TV and uh, movie theme songs are just not catchy. But anyway. How many shows do you watch that have theme songs anymore? Well, that's the thing. They don't. <laughs> like, it, it, They have like a little 10 second cue that it just goes like zzz or something and that's it. You're yeah. right. Mm. But, but the I mean, ones that I don't do have theme songs are not great. I think I need a two minute song that before every episode of Breaking Bad I watch where it's like, everywhere you look, there's a No, no, no. I need to have the actor in the middle of action and then freezing and then having his name <laughs> and, come and across like the screen. Laugh. Unless, yeah, yeah, I don't know what's going on, okay? Brian Cranston's just like bald and dripping and there's blood yeah. all over him and he just turns to the camera and goes, whoa! <laughs> Way up high <laughs> in the face. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't know. I guess, Ian, my question to you is, now that you've finally been exposed to Spidey, are you going to watch more Spider-Man? Well... <laughs> Uh, Based on this, I, I, I probably will at some point. I probably will at some point, just to sort of rinse the the metaphorical taste of this out of my mouth. I have to reset. Mm. Well, I did notice that you referenced Sam Raimi earlier. You are aware Sam Raimi directed the first three Spider-Man films, right? I am aware of that. Yes. When I referenced Sam Raimi, I was more um, uh, I had more Evil Dead in sure. mind, mm. right? I'm just but saying he uses knowing, a lot of the same tricks. So yeah, knowing to that, hear you that he watch... did the same sort of thing for the Spider-Man movies that he directed. Right. But knowing that, you should watch Spider-Man. All of them. Which, uh, every okay. single one? If, if I had to watch one of them, and uh, for any of our listeners out there who are listening to this Spider-Man-centric podcast without having watched a Spider-Man movie, for their benefit as well, what's the one Spider-Man film? Spider-Man well, 2. Spider-Man 1. Because you can't just watch Spider-Man 2. You can watch Spider-Man yes, you can. 1. Yeah, you can. And, then, and then you'll want to watch Spider-Man 2. Uh, you, you told, you told Ian one. what happens in Spider-Man 1 with no. the Uncle Ben thing, and he knows it, so now he could just go into Spider-Man Let's 2. put it this way. We all know that Empire Strikes Back is the best Star Wars movie, but you would never tell someone to start with Empire Strikes Back. If somebody them, also, But if somebody said, I'm only watching one and then never watching them again, you're going to say uh, A New Hope, or are you okay, going to say Empire? But, but or are you going to say Phantom Menace? Yeah, I would. <laughs> right. I would say Phantom Menace, but um, <laughs> I get your point, but honestly, yeah, and just watch would say Spider-Man Amazing 1. Spider-Man 2. Okay, yeah. Sp- <laughs> two against one for Spider-Man 2? Spider-Man oh, 1. I was going to suggest, actually, if you want to watch some good retro Spidey, uh, the 60s cartoon is... Oh. One of my favorites. Okay. okay. I, I like cartoons. Okay, Love well, then I'm going to throw my vote in for Spider-Man from the 80s, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. There you go, Ian. Don't watch that one, don't Ian. Watch don't watch it. it. It's going to be a no, Firestar don't, don't, and no. Iceman. I guarantee you'll like it. I guarantee. Mm, 
Mm-hmm. Well, so so far, um, thanks to Mike, I've I've watched uh, Doc Savage and I've watched this Spider Man movie. So I don't know if I'm going to lean towards your recommendations on this. <laughs> yeah, this is not recommendations. This is hey, this is I just take where history you know sends me. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's very Doc uh, Savage. Come on, very anyway. we watched the '90s Spider Man. We're doing That's this for one. science, you see. Ian. Yeah, this exactly. Isn't for science. pleasure. We hate doing this. <laughs> yeah, this we're doing not, this for the benefit yeah, the, of the world. This is not for fun. Anyway, dude, watch um, Japanese Spider Man. It's oh, like literally a year after this. That, but that one is so very super fun. Super Sentai, but it has nothing to do with Spider Man. But it is very fun. Yeah, I am low key excited yeah. to look for that. Yeah. So here's the thing: um, we technically already wrapped up the episode, but if there's anything else you guys want to talk about, there's a couple scenes I could flip through and I could talk about. Do you want to talk about the scene where the guy attempts to commit suicide? Oh my goodness, we sh- we have to talk about that because it's ridiculous. Yeah. That was pretty brutal, eh? Well. It's also terribly written and directed. Like, the guy leans out of his window, and then it takes, like, ten minutes. Like, people see Mm -hmm. him. The girl screams. Peter Parker leaves the scene. Then he changes to Spider-Man. No, then he climbs up to the top of the building. Then he changes to Spider-Man. And it just takes so long. Uh, I just thought Unlike the rest of this movie. Yeah, that's the thing. That's kind of a (laughs) microcosm for the rest of the movie. But did everyone agree that that was terrible? And then... You yeah, think and, that he would carry him mm, up to the top of the building, but he just brings him back in the window. But Josh, what were you gonna say? Um, yeah. So the bad guy's henchman, Uncle, who is Uncle Leo, by the way. Uh, Uncle Leo walks in. Oh, and that's puts where the, I know him from. Okay. Yeah, he puts he puts the pin on his suit jacket lapel, but then he's still in his hospital gown when he gets hypnotized to jump off the building. You think that maybe he would like pretend to be a nurse or something and then walk in and pin it to the underside of his gown or something, which would make him get up. And But it's just like. Yeah, so so the pin know. doesn't work. Uh, it, it, it seems to work via distance in that case. But then when Peter Parker himself <laughs> has the pin fall right. off his lapel, all of a sudden he snaps out of it, which suggests that it's not proximity to the person, but it's proximity to the lapel. Mm. Oh, as long I as see. you put it on their lapel, it's fine. Uh, Even if your uh, coat's right. hanging up, as long gotcha. as it's on your lapel. The jacket matters. Okay. Yeah, the jacket's directly connected to your brain, not the mm. pin. And the mm. pin's just mm. connected to the jacket. I see. That's why nobody caught on for as Maybe long as it's the jacket that is controlling the motions of these people, right? The jacket itself is moving mm. the arms and legs. Love you know that. what? I wouldn't have put it past the eighties Spider Man to have a comic book where Jacket Man did take <laughs> yeah. over New York. Uh, also kids, don't uh, Google Jacket Man. I just realized that's not a <laughs> No. Not a great idea. Um oh by the way, the the line that he says at the end um jj is like how do you like how do you get all these pictures of spider-man how are you always there on the scene right right at the right Uh. moment to take pictures of spider-man and he looks him dead in the eye peter peter looks to him and says because i believe right (laughs) (laughs) credits roll as he walks off into the sunset believe what yeah spider-man like he's real everybody believes we saw him you took pictures of him (laughs) for the newspaper we know (laughs) uh i should point out stan lee did not like this show Mm. shocking because if he felt like it didn't have anything about it that made spider-man you know appealing and i agree with him true but he um, did like the Japanese Spider-Man, which has even less to do with Spider-Man. No, well, maybe he was just talking out of his hat. I don't know. No, it's because it's better. Oh. It is better. Um, yeah, anyway. this is just... Uh, they could have plugged in anybody and it could be Spider-Man in this. Like, it has mm-hmm. nothing to do with Spider-Man. The fact that also, too, that the, that they don't have any, like... Super villains, or like even characters yeah. from the comics that tie into his personal life. It's just like none of this really feels like Spider Man. He's in a Spider Man costume and he swings around, but other than that, he's fighting like Generic like Yakuza members. Why yeah, are three. why are there like martial artists working for this white dude? 
uh, it has mind to be controlling racist people. Somehow it's the seventies. Well, the they right, yeah, they probably had some leftover props from another movie, and they just be like, let's throw these guys sticks. in. Right? Sticks. That's all they had was sticks, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You like, could have just. We got to do some of these sticks, guys. We have them in the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got these three monk robes too. Throw them in. <laughs> but that fight scene was pretty cool, though. Especially because, again, I think a lot of things that we, we like about this episode are probably by accident. But when the music is cut out for like two minutes, and then the moment I think he jumps on the roof, it kicks in. That's a pretty cool, effective little thing. But again, it's probably a fluke. It's probably like, oh, you know, we forgot to add. We actually meant to have it in this part, but we forgot to add it in. And then it went to error. And then we were like, ah, oh, who gives a shit? I don't know if I would say anyway. I liked the fight scene, but. Yeah. Um. <sighs> I also did not like the fight choreography. It's also Aww. very slow. Like you you can tell that they're waiting. Like Spider-Man is waiting for somebody to hit him and then he turns around to face them. Oh, or the way then, that they, when they punch it's always like this so the guy can duck. Right. right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I even did mm-hmm, oops, Sorry. Go ahead. No go. Uh, uh even Spider-Man like jumping onto the wall to like dodge them, he like stays there and he just spins on the spot very slowly. It's like who would like how is are you missing Spider Man? Is that when he kicks? Probably, them? yeah. He's just like on the wall and he just spins yeah. on the spot. It's like it was cool that he jumped to the wall, but you're right. Then it's like they should have done something more with it. You're right. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say I like the part in the first fight scene where he just kind of stands there and realizes that these guys are gonna punch him, and he's like. I don't know how to fight and then just walks up and <laughs> yeah. like runs away. <laughs> exactly. I did really yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, yep. Cause like, that's very Peter to me where he's like, doesn't realize that he's strong and stuff like that yet. So he just like, it's like, well, okay. Out. And then obviously gets mm. caught, but that was funny. There I don't know some if it was funny supposed moments. to be. Yeah. Like you <laughs> said, liked, uh, Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say the other funny moment was when he like looks at the camera, he's like on a building in his in Spider Man suit and looks in the camera under his legs, and he's just fully looking at the camera. I was just like, I just remember that. What is this shot? Yeah, <laughs> I think that Ugh. there's about three minutes of great footage in this episode, and eh, good, and eighty seven minutes of bad footage. Yeah, of good footage. It could have been. You're right. It could have been an hour. Like. A typical TV episode would be 43 minutes or so, so it could have been 43, but it could have been even shorter. It could have been 22, right? Mm-hmm. It's Just like- crazy to me that this was a, as this was a successful movie because this played in movie theaters overseas. They have good taste overseas, yeah. Crazy to me. No, they so, don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so the second and third episode were also paired together and were put in theaters as a movie, and that is Spider-Man Strikes Back. And then the last two episodes of uh, the last season were also packaged together for a third movie, which was Spider-Man The Dragon's Challenge. That sounds awesome. Uh, so my question to Champion <laughs> is, Ian, are you prepared to come back for our review of Spider-Man? I in- would enthusiastically <laughs> hop on that podcast okay. enthusiastically okay good are you are you uh, aware of the existence of a man named david dubois of windsor ontario yes i saw him the other day actually i saw erica as well they were both at uh, meteor and I, I talked to erica about her appearance on uh, your podcast for the wonder woman episode she awesome was- yes 15 years in the making it was. Uh, mm-hmm. Erica is a frequent guest on our show. Doobie has been on our show once, but we're going to have him on again because we're reviewing Spider Man. And we are booked. Let me just let me just check my schedule here. May 31st. What are you doing May 31st, Ian? I am uh, recording a podcast with you guys <laughs> about Spider Man. Hell yeah, you are. Heck to the yes, you're coming. All right. I love Japanese Spider Man, and I have so many facts and interesting lore and things about Japanese Spider Man because it's. It's very close to my heart because I also love Power Rangers, and one of the reasons we have Power Rangers is because of Japanese Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, like, Super Sentai, which is the, the Power Rangers, adapted what they did in Japanese Spider Man into its show. That's why there's big robots 
and like oh, I'll talk about it. I'll save it all mm-hmm. for that podcast. I was about you, to say you, you have are to tune in. Visibly excited about this. Yes. This, yes. Is, this is great. I was going to say you have to tune into the next episode, Ian. But go ahead, Josh. And if you are interested in learning more about Spider Man, we actually do have an episode of Here Comes the Spider Cast, all about the first pilot episode. So if you want, if you just can't wait till May thirty first you can go and check out uh, that episode. That's right. So be sure to join us for the next episode of Tape Crusaders featuring the Incredible Hulk Review with special guest Cousin Brandon, who was supposed to be here tonight, but he wasn't, (coughs) Uh, as well as Kyle Van Dongen, who I've been uh, hyping up the Hulk to for many, many a year. And then after that episode, we're going to have Spider-Man with Champion and David Dubois as our guest. And then don't forget about the next episode of Slam featuring our review of The Flash, all three flashes. So be sure to join us for that. And Josh, you can take it from here. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. You can find all of our stuff on our website at thecomicbooksyndicate.com. You can also find us on Facebook and YouTube. Um, Please leave us a review or comment on our videos. Let us know what you guys think about the podcast and the movies and shows and comics and all that nerdy stuff that we talk about let us know what you guys think about it too we, we want to keep that comics conversation going that's right so until the next time see you